last but not least. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. It's not last but not least. Sorry, sorry, Chancellor. That's okay, Mr. I jumped We're going to have to get a longer table, though, the next time. Right? <laughs> I don't know where I'll put my notes. I apologize, Chancellor. <laughs> Chancellor Meehan, thank you for the university. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, appreciate the opportunity. Uh, appreciate uh, the members of the committee being here. Um, I also have submitted uh, prepared uh, uh, testimony to members of the committee, so I will summarize uh, uh, that testimony. And, uh, I guess a couple of observations that I would make um, hearing the presentations of my colleagues and the President. I think uh, in many ways uh, uh, the thing that President Wilson has done most effectively, I think, is put together a team of chancellors that work in a very collaborative way. I don't think this university has ever collaborated more effectively as we are right now. Whether it's in Lowell, we have something called the Massachusetts Medical Device Development Center, which is a partnership with the medical school. The fact that you can go uh, take a program uh, at Lowell and then go to the medical school and interact, the fact that they were, we were interacting uh, with the Amherst campus, the Boston campus, and the Dartmouth campus in a way that historically there would be competition among the campuses. I can assure you that we're all very competitive people and we compete, but the fact is this university has never collaborated more effectively in its history. And in these difficult times, I think that's critically important because oftentimes we can pool our resources, take our areas of expertise and collaborate together. It gives us better opportunities for our student. If a student comes to Lowell, for example, and is interested in, uh, in becoming a lawyer, we're now able to collaborate with Dartmouth and have that person go uh, to the new sc uh, law school at Dartmouth. We're able to, when we get students who want to go to medical school, and Chancellor Collins has developed a program so that, uh, that, that folks who are on the other campuses have a tremendous opportunity, they study hard and they work hard to go to medical school. And it's all because of the collaboration. And, and I think President Wilson uh, deserves the, the, the credit for that uh, and, and we appreciate uh, all that he's done for the university. Uh, Lowell is an exciting place. Um, I'm actually in uh, just starting my fifth year at Lowell. Uh, during that period of time, we've grown enrollment by 30 percent. Why do we grow enrollment? Well, because the, first, the last three years before I got there, we had run a deficit, and I, I went to see Jean McCormick, who had a similar situation when she went to Dartmouth. I said, how do I get out of this deficit? And she said, you've got to grow your way out of it, because as many of you may know, 60 percent of the revenue actually comes from students and student fees. So we looked at Lowell at where we had the capacity <coughs> to grow enrollment. Uh, I liken the concept, it's sort of like uh, you have uh, a number of programs, let's call them call them airplanes, and on some of the airplanes you have half the seats are full, and some of the airplanes you have, they're all full, and some of them three quarters full. So by growing enrollment, we, we, we put to capacity each of the, each of the planes, each of our, uh, our programs. We're able to basically turn, financially turn the Lowell campus around because of that smart investment. We've also uh, broken every record at Lowell in terms of private fundraising. Uh, we have scholarship fundraisings. We've uh, been out and be able to, to, to raise a million dollars from ten different people for endowed uh, professorships. The interesting thing about growing enrollment by 30 percent, we've increased our diversity in, in the incoming freshman class by 72 percent from diverse backgrounds. Critically important and we have totally changed the look and feel of Lowell campus. We've increased the uh, number of people of color uh, on our staff and faculty by 20 percent. We have more to go in that area, but, uh, but we're proud of the way we're growing. The average SAT score is up, in spite of the fact that we grew 30 percent, up 20 points so far in this year uh, because of the demand for UMass Lowell education, and, the, and we're able to be more selective in the students we accept. We believe the SAT score is going to go up another 15 points this year alone. Um, we have been recognized in Lowell by the Chronicle of Higher Education uh, for our uh, increasing graduation rates. And in fact, we were cited by the Chronicle that our graduation rates went up higher than any other public research university in New England. Our freshman success rates, critically important because uh, when I got to Lowell, 25% uh, of the freshman class uh, didn't want to be, become sophomores. Well, it's critically important. If you lose a student the freshman year, there's a chance they'll never go back uh, to a college or university. So we've put extra resources on the academic side of the, uh, of, of, of the university. 
we, cr we expanded the number of beds on campus. And as many of you know, uh, the state doesn't pay for beds. We have to find innovative ways to have more people living on campus, and we're headed towards a 50-50 split. We, uh, we now have learning communities where cohorts of students take courses together. Uh, they live in the same uh, dormitories, the same living areas. They're assigned a faculty member who gets a stipend to work with those students so that they are successful. And we have increased our, uh, our freshman success rate up to 82% now, which is a dramatic uh, increase. In addition to that, at Lowell, we are expanding our physical uh, building. Uh, to hear Tr Chancellor Motley say 40 years, well, we're 38 years since we had a new academic building on the Lowell campus, and we're simultaneously constructing uh, two new buildings. One of them is the Emerging Technologies and Innovation Center. Uh, the state provided us about $35 million for it. It's a $75 million project. We're also borrowing uh, $25 million for that project, but it's going to be a cutting-edge research uh, facility that will help us continue our efforts, as Gene had talked about and the other campuses have, in research in helping develop uh, uh, new companies to create new jobs. It's going to be a state-of-the-art, high bay uh, labs, clean rooms, and, uh, and we're proud of that uh, building. On the other side of the campus, thanks to uh, the legislature and the governor, we're building a new academic uh, building there that will house nursing, uh, criminal justice, and psychology. That's a $40 million building. At the same time, we've been aggressive in terms of acquiring buildings. We, uh, uh, Senator John, who knows a lot of the specifics of, of this, but we uh, uh, acquired a uh, purchase, uh, downtown Doubletree Hotel, for $15 million. Uh, we also invested $5 million in the facility. Uh, there are 500 students that are housed there. We run it now as a UMass Lowell in and conference center. And uh, no state money involved, but we're actually uh, making revenue from that, which, which obviously helps us deal with all the other challenges that we have. We acquired the Songus Arena uh, for a dollar. Um, some people think that I overpaid for that, but, um, uh, but we've also invested. Uh, yeah, the president thinks I should have gotten it for 50 cents. But, uh, twice as much as we But uh, we've also invested in that building. And, and, and that building is a, is a great community partnership with the city of Lowell and the surrounding communities. Uh, but uh, it's where our Division I hockey team plays. We were, uh, last year, we were actually 16th in the country in attendance. Um, student concerts are held there. Part of, the, part of the way you increase student success rates and retention rates, you have to have a community life, a, a university life. And now there are student concerts at that building. We use that as a student convocation center. It, it's a tremendous addition to our campus, which also uh, is still a great partnership with the, with the city of Lowell. We recently purchased the uh, St. Joseph's Hospital building, which was basically vacant. Um, and uh, we borrowed the money for that, but that's, uh, that's really in between our campuses. We have an east campus, a north campus, and a south campus. It's an exciting project. We're, at, we're actually out to bid a new, on a new bookstore. Uh, we're going to locate it there. We're actually going to play a role, as Gene mentioned, the role that we play in our communities. It's significant. It's a significant economic development role, and we're going to help revitalize uh, that, uh, that neighborhood as well. We have grown research. Uh, all of it, we're obviously, all of us are a research institution led by the medical school and the, and the flagship. But we've increased research expenditures at Lowell by 59% over the last four years. What does that mean? It means that our students have a great opportunity to work with our research faculty. Uh, it provides a teaching assistant opportunities and, and also provides us. We've always focused our research on Lowell on those technologies that have a high likelihood of commercialization. What does that mean? On those technologies that create companies and create jobs, and we continue to play that role. It's always historically been our role since we were Lowell Textile Institute. So uh, uh, I talk about uh, the importance of growing revenue. Last year alone, we grew revenue, non-state revenue, by $17 million. Uh, our online program has been a smashing success, and our continuing education program a smashing success. Uh, this year will gross about $30 million, which gives us an opportunity to invest $15 million into the, um, uh, into the university. So these are really exciting times at UMass um, Lowell. Um, uh, we want that excitement to continue. The quality of our student is going up. By any way or any metric you would measure a university, we are on an upward trajectory. Uh, we want to keep that going. Obviously, uh, uh, the state budget cuts are challenging, but uh, you know, I think the investment the state has made in this university, really across the campuses, has, has been paid back, you know, over and over and over again. 
Uh, the last point that I would make that the other chancellors have made, and, and, and Keith talked about one of his graduating students. It was a great story in the Globe by Kevin Cullen on, on a student of ours, Katina uh, Walter, who graduated this year. And, um, you know, she was a hard-working kid who actually was, was living out of her car. She literally was homeless. And it was a dramatic story of how the University of Massachusetts Lowell changed her life. And uh, she came in with me to Boston today because when the story was in the Globe, there's a major company in Boston. The CEO called me over the weekend and said, I want, I want to bring that woman in for an interview. And she's having that interview right now. We are literally transforming the lives of people that walk through the doors. And I know that because it transformed my, my life, uh, totally transformed. It gave me the, the tools that I need to accomplish whatever I set out to accomplish in my life. And we're doing that today in a dramatic fashion. We need to continue to do that in the future. Thanks very much for the opportunity. Thank you, Chancellor.